we're going to talk about here is, te is, is tension control of the web. Okay? Now, on this machine, you have unwind. That's the roll that's coming off. You have over in this end, the roll that is being rewound. Right? And the web is going through here, up and down, until it reaches this end. And we'll forget about the web guide and the print stations and the other things that happen. We're concerned with the tension of the web. Now, in uh, slightly more sophisticated presses, you have a nip point here called the infeed nip. And then over here, you have an outfeed. Does it call itself on that panel outfeed nip right down there? Who's no. there? Huh? Nip. Yes, they call it a nip, bro. Okay. I'll feed nip. Ex exit nip. Exit nip, okay? They call it an exit nip. Maybe you could call this an entrance nip, okay? Regardless, you get the idea. You have a nip point or a rubber roller and a steel roller that lock in here and hold the web pinched between that point, but it also rotates. And the same thing is happening here. Now, in an ideal circumstance, the tension between this nip and this nip is controlled by an intermediate gearbox, sometimes known as a PIV or something like that. But this gearbox, you have a shaft. There's a shaft, there's a shaft in the press that's controlled to all the printing stations. This is higher. It's controlled to all the printing stations. This shaft is the main drive shaft. From that shaft comes out uh, the gears that drive the impression cylinders on the press. Okay? Now that shaft and this nip, everybody is in the same relationship. However, between this nip point and this nip point here, there's this special gearbox that I'm talking about. And what it does is, let's say you take an end feed in that gearbox, and this thing is rotating at, let's say, 100 RPM. The shaft coming here. But then, before this, this box, this gearbox in here, you can vary the relationship between the speed of this shaft and this shaft. You can make them equal, or you can make it less than or greater than the speed of this shaft. So if you want to increase tension, you might make the RPMs on this side be 100 RPM plus. If you want to decrease the tension, you reduce it to get closer and closer to 100, but never below. If you go to something less than 100 RPM, in this case, right. you'll start to get slack in the theory. All right? So now, I took a quick look at the back of the machine. I could not confirm whether that exists. And I also suspect that it may not, because I don't see this in feed nip. I don't even see it missing. So, it could be that this machine is not sophisticated enough and doesn't do that. If that's the case, the likelihood that's happening is you're controlling this web tension with this roller here, but I doubt that. I, I, I really feel that there must be the situation here. Now, the question arises, why is that? Well, as this roll decreases in diameter, the, the brake, the net effect is that that's the same brake pressure results in greater tension because it's easier for that brake to hold tension at a point closer to the core than it is a point further out. It's easier to pull it off, pull the material off of a bigger roll. So as the roll gets smaller, if you don't mess with the tension, the tension gets greater. Sometimes you have to go down on tension during the run, and what you want to do then is note what your starting tension is and what your ending tension is and do that during the run. One way that tension variation can manifest itself is if you start and register and over time the register creeps and you have to keep messing it, then you start a new roll and you have to get everything set back up and it starts to creep. Because the registration settings for a given tension are not the same as the registration settings for another tension and therefore as the tension varies through the machine, your registration starts to creep. That is almost an unavoidable phenomenon with these little machines that don't have sophisticated tension controllers. But be aware that's a way to manage it. And don't be surprised by it. You may have to chase the registration. 
and the further colors are apart, the greater the influence. Colors that are close to each other won't see such a, a shift, but it gets greater as, as the machine is away. Okay? Now, on this end, the opposite is happening. When you start off with a given uh, tension on your uh, air, air, air valve, uh, the, the roll is smaller, it has greater net tension. As the roll gets bigger and bigger, if you have the same t tension on this, or, or the same torque on this rewind shaft, the net effect is that the tension is lower. That aggravates this situation. You got tension going down as this gets bigger, tension going up as this gets bigger. So the net effect is increase of tension on this side, decrease of tension on that side, resulting in a drifting of the registration. You want to mitigate that. You want to start by having these things in balance, and you want to have the least amount of variation in tension as you go. You're going to have to practice to find the sweet spots on this. But remember my words when I say registration drift. You start off good, it ends up not good. I keep chasing it, then going back. Suspect tension. Try to lessen tension so that everything is... And try to decrease the amount of variation from the start point of tension to the end point of tension. Now, if that gearbox is there, it's you can change the relationship so much that if this nip pressure is strong enough, it can snap away or, or cause it to slip under the plate or something like that. And But the purpose of this nip feed roll right here, other than to control tension between these points, are so that the variation and tension that occurs as this roll gets bigger is mitigated. Or in other words, this part of the web does not realize what's going on out here as much because right here is just saying, I don't care what goes on here, you're staying calm from this point back. So that's the purpose of that roll right there. If you accidentally leave that roll up, the tension problems are going to really manifest themselves and you probably won't be able to run. You'll probably say, what's going on? I need to go back there and see if my nip roller is either uh, something wrong with it or if I just forgot to put it down. Okay? So, that's why I went back there and looked to see if we had that PID adjustment. I don't know if it exists in this machine or not. You might want to start to look at into that study. It might not exist because it doesn't have a, a, a nip in the back. Where would you actually have 